Animal. Star of The Good Place, Emmy-nominated actor William Jackson Harper. What would surprise fans of The Good Place? I don't know if this would actually surprise them, but I think it might. The family tragedy that rocked his world. He moved us to the suburbs, and then within the year, he actually wound up passing. On being himself? Like, I don't want to lean into an idea of what black masculinity is supposed to be. His big break. From the time that I got my first professional job to The Good Place, it took 15, 16 years. And finding love. This is the connection that I want, and this is the person that I want, period. Did you bring your bodyguard? We have Chico the dog. William Jackson uh, Harper, uh, welcome to the show. Hey, man, how you doing? Good, good. Did you bring your bodyguard, also known as Chico the dog, or did you come solo? We have Chico the dog. Chico the dog, bum, 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 Chico the dog. Oh. <laughs> He's a rescue. He's just like this weird cow-colored mutt with an underbite. <laughs> let, me, let me see Chico. I, I feel like I'm at a disadvantage without oh, seeing yeah. Chico the dog. <laughs> All right, here he is. Ah. Oh. Here's Chico the dog. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, but Chico owns his parents. William Jackson Harper is best known for playing Cheedy, the indecisive scholar on NBC's afterlife comedy, The Good Place. Now, what would happen if I talked to your mother right now? What would she tell me that young William was like? I was a good kid. I was I was a good kid. <laughs> but I mean, um, she'd probably call me like kind of precocious in certain in certain ways. You know those kids that have like heavy voices before they're supposed to have? I was one of those kids that had like a slightly heavy voice for what I was supposed to have. And, my aunt would, would say like, you know, she would, when she ever, whenever she does impersonations of me as a little kid, she's just like, mom, this is not the way we were gonna do this. And she, I'm like, why do you gotta make me sound like so grown? She's like, you always sounded like that. And where did you guys grow up? Well, I was born in Dallas, Texas, and then we moved out to the suburbs of Dallas. It's kind of weird actually, like say it out loud, but like my, uh, my dad, uh, was actually very sick. I think he got diagnosed with cancer when he was 24, and he wouldn't give him very long to live. He wanted to move us into a, a safer environment, and, you know, the suburbs were that. Shortly after he turned 30, he moved us to the suburbs, and then within uh, within the year, he actually wound up passing. Uh, and so there was just sort of this mission to get us into a place that was going to be a better place for us to grow up. And my mom, she's been doing this by herself. She's been raising two kids by herself since she was 30 years old, which to me is like, that's a that's a young adult. What did your mom do? Give me a little color on your mom. Who is she? What, what, what does she do? My mom's actually a nurse now. Uh, she worked as like a executive assistant for a long time when I was coming up. And then she decided she wanted to go back to school because um, she was always really smart. She decided to go back uh, to, to school to be a nurse and she got her bachelor's. And it's funny, actually, she was the first person to graduate from college in my family, I believe. There was a time where like I was in college, mom was in college, my sister was in high school and we were all just in the house just sort of like hunkering down. You know, it was, you know, it was just sort of like this. It's a very tight unit in that way. Did you ever think about following her into nursing or into medicine, or, or, or were you always headed for the stage and the screen? Uh, you know, for for me, theater was like the only thing that I sort of exhibited any natural aptitude for. I felt free when I was doing it. It was uh, a way for me to express myself that I had ready access to. For someone who, who hasn't been on the stage, like why were you good? What 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 about you made you stand out? And what and what made you think like I could make money at this? Like this could actually be my job. Man, I feel like when it comes to comedy, when it comes to comedic timing, I understand it. Patty, uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I, I had a poster of you on my wall in high school. Well, actually, it was just a, a poster of Trinity from The Matrix, but that's how I imagined you would look because you're so cool. Oh, is she the reason you got beat up so much? She's one of them. I, I try to find a way to 
have the drop on an audience? You know, like how do you surprise people? Because that's that's where the best laughs come from. This has been fun. Is all it? Uh, what was? Uh, why did you? Who was it? <laughs> and so I, I felt like I, I felt like I understood com comedic timing pretty well and how to do things just outside of the, the realm of what's expected to sort of, you know, keep that sort of uh, pearly mist of, of unexpectedness, sort of, you know, like somewhere in the, in, the, in the periphery. You know, how do you do something unexpected? And I've always just tried to work that way. And it's something that I unconsciously sort of leaned into, I think, as, as soon as I started studying. So how did you get comfortable both with that idea that you want to be unusual? Because most of us don't say that out loud. Like people want to kind of fit in. And, and then how yeah. did you get comfortable articulating the idea that, that you wanted to be unusual? I can see that you're going through something. But exams are next week. So can you teach us anything? All right, nerd. Want to learn something? I'll teach you something. I guess maybe I've always felt like a little bit of an outsider anyway. And so like really trying to wedge myself into uh, a specific idea of how I should present myself or exist in the world, um, it, it never really worked for me. The only way for me to move through the world is to just be comfortable in being a little bit strange and a little left of center. That's just where I live. And how much is race, do you think, tied in to that idea that you're an outsider and that you need to be yourself? Look, man, when you're studying theater, one of the things that I think a lot of black actors probably run into is a lot of the things in the great American canon. There, there's not a lot of roles for us. But I think that, you know, for me, I like my race has always played a factor in how I navigate this business and how I navigate my art. It always has. Maybe not in a way where it's like I'm at odds with it or combating a system all the time. Like I don't want to lean into an idea of what black masculinity is supposed to be. And so I think realizing that there are certain ideas of blackness and certain ideas of maleness that sort of pervade a lot of art and media, I like to subvert that when I can. That's not to say that sometimes, you know, those ideas aren't coming from a place that is like very well observed and studied and real. That's, you know, it's just, you know, if there's a way to add a certain depth or understanding that is something outside of just the, the, the agreed upon idea, if there's a way to insert something else that might just color it in a different way, I want to do that as much as I can. And really sort of embracing what that is for me is, is something that is, that's, it's, it's important because we need to investigate varying ideas of what it is, you know, I think as people of color in particular, and especially as, as, a, as a black man, I feel like it, we have to really sort of dive into the nuances of these experiences because it's not monolithic and it's really useful to, to get it. I think everyone will benefit from having a deeper understanding and a broader understanding of the different renderings of black masculinity. Why do you think it's valuable to explore the nuances? Other than that, you're saying that they're varying types, but like, why does that matter? Why, why, why? Because you clearly are invested in that. You're, you're talking about it. You care about it. You bring in, I would even say, a confidence uh, uh, to it. Like, like, why mm -hmm. does that matter? I feel like I look at the world and I see people assuming certain things a lot. And we can't help but be influenced by what we see. And, you know, the renderings of people in, in our favorite movies and TV shows and theater, you know, we can't help but be influenced by that. And, and honestly, some people are like really trying to like make a statement, but may miss something or may go for something that feels a little bit broad and, and, and nonspecific. And this is the beauty of bringing an actor into a part is that like, there's a lot of people that go in and they, you know, they create these roles and then they do something just a little bit strange with it. And that's when it sticks with you. That's when it feels like, for me, at least, it, it, that's when it sticks with me the most. And there's like a, a color there that is that is specific to only them, their experience, their outlook, their worldview. And it's important to, I want to break up the idea of 
the black experience is a monolithic thing. And that's, you know, like that I'm I'm deeply invested in that. Our home is the training ground for her dreams policy. Ensure carefully. Dream fearlessly. Uh, tell me from your vantage point as a person who actually lived it, you know, what, what is your story of success? Honestly, always wanted to pursue theater primarily just because it was a much more engaging uh, art form for me. I also just thought, you know, like TV and film, I, I never really thought of myself as have someone having a face for it. But like, um, you know, theater was way more receptive to me as like a, as a performer in different sorts of roles. But then, you know, again, I was broke all the time and I was employed all the time. And so I decided after one of my bouts of, am I going to keep doing this theater thing? Um, I decided that uh, you know, a few years ago, I was going to come out to L.A. for pilot season. I was going to get a full team behind me. I was going to get a manager and an agent and just like have all hands on deck, go just all in and try to get a job on TV and just see what it is. So I think that the real success moment for me was coming out and getting the good place literally within like two weeks of actually coming out to L.A. You put the peeps in the chili pot and add the m and ms You put the peeps in the chili pot, it makes it taste bad. So that was that was the real turning point, and really ever since then, it's been sort of a sort of a slow build, you know, over the last four years of of different opportunities that I'm that I've always been really excited about. Best advice you've received or given about dreaming fearlessly and realizing your dreams. As long as what you're doing is making you happy, then continue to do it. And if you need to step away for a second, that's okay too. Um, I think that it's, uh, especially when it comes to being an actor, there comes a point where, I, th I think for a lot of us, where you hit the point where you're just sort of like, I am not sure I'm enjoying this right now. And it's totally fine to get your bearings and to check in with yourself and um, and and the, the industry is going to be there, you know, it's not always now or never. It's like it took me from the time that I got my first professional job to the good place. It took 15, 16 years. And, you know, there's a lot of jobs in between there. And so it's, um, you know, there's moments in that in that 15, 16 years where I was feeling on top of the world and moments where I was like down in the dumps and then moments where I was just desperate and chasing. And so. If, if the dream becomes something that is making you unhappy and making you feel desperate and afraid, step back for a second, breathe, like take some time. It's okay, It'll, it's gonna be there. The dream isn't going away, you know, but like uh, just pursue the thing that makes you happy. And as long as it's making you happy, go for it. And if it's not, Take a second, because you might get happy again. You know, you just probably just need to, you probably need some time. What would you tell your younger self about why you scored that pilot that you did? To younger me, I'd say like, A, like, you know, don't go in there looking to get the job, go in looking to give the performance. Eleanor, I swear I am your friend and I will never cause you any harm. You know, just, just relax, enjoy it. You know, I think that was the thing about that particular audition was I felt relaxed. I was just having a good time. Um, it wasn't, I wasn't feeling pressure because I had sort of moved beyond holding on to this thing of being an actor as like the official yardstick of my self-worth. And like letting that part go, it's a lot easier said than done, but letting that part go was really helpful. Tell me about this wonderful girlfriend of yours that I hear about so much. How did you guys meet? Uh, uh, give me a little color on the love affair. How did it come together? And, and, and it seems like uh, you guys have walked a nice journey together so far. We've actually known each other for years. Uh, we met in New York. Uh, we were both there doing theater. And um, when we met, we were with other people. And we just sort of hit it off as friends, actually. Anyway, years passed. I was doing a production of 
uh, Romeo and Juliet in Connecticut, and they were still looking for a Juliet. And she had come to see a, a show uh, that I was in, and uh, I, I asked her, like, I'm doing this production of R&J, uh, you know, if you want to audition for it, I can like put your, you know, your, I can put your name out there and just see if that's, you know, if you're if you're interested. And she was like, Yeah, sure. She went in and she auditioned and she got the part and and she's she was she was great. I mean, it was, you know, I always like respected her as an artist, but like over the course of that summer, we we're doing Romeo and Juliet, man. I mean, like you know, we were already <laughs> we were already like it, it just sort of it just sort of blossomed into something different. We kept a secret from the entire cast that summer, and then from then on, we've just been together. And that was eight years ago. Has it changed at all? Is uh as the spotlight on you has grown, as, as, as you've kind of stepped into the spotlight, has it gotten stronger? Has it gotten different? Has that put a strain on it in any way? Oh, stronger, stronger. You know, there's not really a strain just because there's not, there's there's aspects of my life that have changed, but a lot of my life is very much the same as it ever was. I don't want to shift it. I hope you don't want to shift it. But I mean, like, <laughs> I want to, you know, I, 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 I just, I feel like this is, this is the connection that I that I want, and this is the person that I want. Period. You know, she's also an actor, and she understands a lot of this business. And it's nice to have someone to really talk about all of this with. I'm I'm really grateful for that. The last two things, I want to do something called rapid fire with you. Uh, where uh, I throw a few things out at you and I want to get kind of your immediate reaction. All right, all right. Your top uh, heroes and heroines. You know, uh, heroes, James Baldwin. Let's see, who else? I mean, like, I can't I can't help but think of Bayard Rustin and God, you know, uh, <laughs> I gotta say Felicia Rashad, huge, huge personal hero of mine. Also a really dope person to meet in person. I love that, I love it. What would surprise fans of The Good Place? I don't know if this would actually surprise him, but I, 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 I think it might. We're all incredibly foul-mouthed. Yeah, no shit. Oh, shit. Right in the well, I mean, it is a philosophy show with fart jokes, so it probably wouldn't surprise anybody that was like also cussing up a storm, too. If you had not scored a pilot during that pilot season, what would you be doing right now? I, uh, I, had, I had previously thought about teaching, actually. Um, because I had felt that I had done enough theater jobs and had had enough of a professional career that I could at least give people a heads up on the things you might encounter, which I think is useful. Where are we gonna see you in 10 years, in 15 years? You know, hopefully we'll all be in a place where we are, we are seeing really interesting uh, stories Hopefully, I'm one of those people that is populating that world, like and telling stories. I mean, this is this is my life's dream, man. Like, I, I'm having fun doing this, and so if this is, if this is what it's going to be, and if I get to keep doing work that I've been so fortunate to do, th that's that's where I'm hoping to be. Man, I, uh, I, I think I see that world with you. If you allow me to be, I was very proud for all of us and proud for you uh, about what you're doing. I think good things. Uh, I think good things are ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining Thanks, us. Thank you so much. Hey, I hope you enjoyed William Jackson Harper as much as I did. Definitely one of these scenarios where I left a bigger fan. Uh, he's funny. Uh, uh, what a good, interesting guy. What an interesting thought, as his, as his favorite aunt said, he had one of those old voices even as a kid. And I'm starting to realize that these actors who love their craft, who started it early, Tashina Arnold, Tatiana Maslany, and now William Jackson Harper, these are my people. I like them. They've got a spark. They've been blessed to get to do something they love. And at least in each of these cases, I see a level not only of wisdom, uh, but of gratitude and kind of goodness. And I like seeing that. I like seeing it with my girl Padma Lakshmi as well, if you haven't seen that one. In any case, hey, guess what? There's good stuff here. Please subscribe, tell a friend. And if you really want to go the whole way, listen to the podcast. Hey, tune into The Carlos Watson Show. It's like no other. You're going to enjoy it every weekday on YouTube.